three years ago, we lost some grass that got sold out from under us. And it was pretty close and very good grass. I was about ready to dump about 75 pair. And it was early April. I had an old egg teacher of mine who called one day and he said, uh, I have some grass available. We can run about 200 pair. And that's, like I said, way more than what I had. But he had been renting to a cousin of mine. And he said, if you're open to it, would you be willing to run your cows with my cousin, who very good operator, very good cattle, does things the right way, and I said, absolutely. So it was a little bit different. It was up east of Watertown, and it was way further away than, than we run cattle, normally 10 miles or closer. So that was kind of a big change, but you know, there's not too many opportunities where you can have cattle 120 miles away and, and trust the guy to care for your cattle and do a good job doing it. And this was a case where I didn't think twice about it. So that kind of opened my eyes. You know, we were running 200 head together, opened my eyes to, yeah, we can run bulls together and run cows together. We had run kind of similar style cattle, all black Angus, and trusted each other's genetics and bulls, and, and it worked very, very good. The only issue, it was maybe just a little too far away from home. So the next year rolled around and an opportunity for some grass came up a lot closer to home. Neighbor was, I knew he'd been getting out of his cows and called him in April again, very late. And just guessing for sure that this, this grass was gonna be gone. And he said, no, it's still available. I had several guys interested, but I haven't been real interested in, in the guys that you know were asking me about it. He said, when do you wanna come over? So me and Dave came over the, the next day and again, it was a pretty good chunk of ground and I, I knew that I wouldn't have enough cattle to fulfill this amount of grass. So that's where Dave came in. One of my better friends and the guy that, that runs the same style of cattle and does things the, the same way we do. And that was after running that group in Watertown, it, it really wasn't even worth thinking about, you know, whether that could be done or not. We approached the landowner and told him that if we were given the opportunity to rent the land that we would rotational graze on it and they actually took us up on that we actually underbid some fellow ranchers but we offered a rotational graze and they thought that'd be a, a better deal for everybody in the long run uh, Tyler and Dave's uh, rotational grazing uh, practice I guess is what what you'd call what they're doing really fits my needs and so it was a real lucky thing that that uh, I knew Tyler and knew Tyler's family and when he approached me with uh, the plan to kind of implement this rotational grazing program I, I was real excited it was something I've been looking for um, and so I hope we're, we're kind of at the beginning of this project and and I hope that long term it accomplishes a couple goals one is to make this piece of native pasture out here healthier uh, and two, I hope that Tyler's able to make some money out here and, and uh, put his kids through college with that. So we're kind of balancing those two needs. And so far, it looks good. It's a pretty intense deal we run. We have 12 paddocks on that piece we picked up last year. And then this year, we picked up another good chunk of grass. So I guess the benefits are there's a lot of moving, you know, a big group of cows. So we need extra bodies. Another benefit is spraying. We do a lot of spot spraying and cover a lot of ground with two guys. Maintaining fences, spraying, the moving of cattle, it's, there's, there's, there's a lot of work in, in moving cows. It's, it's one of them deals when you set it in motion, that moving cows, you don't stop because it's, it's the weekend and you know your wife wants to go on a trip. You're moving them cows before you're doing stuff like that, I guess. It is unique and we do have differing ideas every once in a while. We butt heads every once in a while because I would say we're probably a little bit more like brothers than we are friends at most of the time. So uh, when he thinks sometimes that we should be moving, I think maybe we ought to leave him another half a day. And uh, I don't know, it always tends to work out pretty well, I guess. It's, uh, this is our, our second year doing it together. So we're, uh, we're learning how to do it just a little bit better and everything's going pretty smooth. Last year we ran 100 head together, and this year we came upon some, some more grass, another opportunity. We were also approached by the landowner because of our rotational grazing practices, and we're running 180 pair together right now. So it's, we just about 
doubled what we're doing together. It's pretty uh, time intensive, I would say, at certain times, because a lot of times we're doing like the first pass through the grass we did every two days. So when you're trying to cut hay and spray crops and stuff like that, and you got to move cows every two days, it's, uh, it can be a handful. But I think it's going to be very beneficial in the long run. The partnership that, that Dave and Tyler have been able to create on their operation here the, these last couple years, it reminds me a lot of the West River grazing coalitions and, and the different grazing partnerships that they have West River that we see a lot. It's basically two local landowners, neither one of which wanted to expand their operation or couldn't expand their operation on their own. They just didn't have the human resources or the facilities to pull it off. And so in order to expand their ranch capacity, they partnered together, they pooled their resources, and it's working out fantastic. They're running larger herds of cows, but they can work collectively they have twice the manpower, twice the resources to actually move those cattle and pull off that type of a system. You know, getting at partnership, it's not just one mind. It, you are going to be better when you have more than one voice. You're gonna have more ideas and more ways to do things. And the challenge, of course, is, is sorting those out to what's gonna be the best thing for that moment in doing that. But, it's a lot better to have more than one thought process when it comes to doing these things.